All right, folks, uh, welcome to the Exploit Development Workshop. I'm Sam Bound, and I see Caitlin is here in the Zoom. She's an assistant that can help you, and I, there may be a couple of others coming later. And um, we can, anyway, so let me tell you what's going on here. This thing is set up like a capture the flag competition. I will demonstrate some things, but you can charge ahead. And if you are relatively advanced, you just charge ahead to whatever level you like. Um, but let me give you an overview, and then I'll demonstrate the first couple challenges. So first we do command injection, where you just um, connect to a web form and exploit it without having to install any software or anything, and there's a lot of that. Um, after you set up a Linux server here just so you have something to work with, and I have a basic project where you practice basic bash Linux commands if you don't know them. And then you can do a command injection in a simple ping form, and SQL injection, um, command injection on Windows, server-side template injection, which is basically exploiting Python 3, and another one here, which we'll talk about later. And um, then we get into the binary stuff. And here's the books this largely comes from. So binary exploits are where you uh, inject into a buffer overflow or a format string vulnerability or heap overflow. You exploit memory corruption vulnerabilities in Linux. So let me uh, mute people because I'm getting some stray noise. Anyway, did that take effect? Normally it has to pop up a little box, but anyway. All right, so uh, there we are, continue. So here you will uh, do a buffer overflow and you'll be injecting a string, which you then execute as executable code. So it's right, in, you have to use the debugger and observe the uh, the raw binary and the assembly code from it. And we'll do many versions of that in 32 and 64 bit Linux and then Windows. So you need a server 2016 virtual machine or a local machine in um, virtual box or VMware. And then we'll do the same thing on Windows. And that's really it. I left some stuff up here for extras like these ARM exploits, uh, which are nice, but you need special hardware that you may not have. You need either a iPhone you can jailbreak or an ARM um, device like a um, Raspberry Pi. So you probably don't have those. So I'd recommend focusing on this. That should be enough to keep you out of trouble for today because this was a two-day workshop at Black Hat and it kept everyone pretty interested. So the first thing you need is Google Cloud Linux server. You can use a local installation of Kali or Ali Linux if you like, but I use the Google Cloud because I found this to be very good at this kind of workshop because um, when I taught one like this at DEF CON several years ago, it was really pretty miserable because everybody would bring in different computers. And a lot of them would bring in their burner machine running some weird thing like Arch Linux that didn't work very well, and they couldn't run a local virtual machine. And I, now that we're in the cloud, I'm greatly um, abandoning virtual machines and just put everything in the cloud. So you can sign up for free Google Cloud machines. You need to give them a credit card, but they won't charge it. They give you $300 of free service, and when you use it up, you just make a new Gmail account and use the same credit card again and get another 300 bucks. I've done it about 20 times. Until recently, you could also get free Windows machines. Now you have to apparently pay for them, or at least you have to enable billing to get those. But Linux machines continue free, and I've been doing tons of work on this Linux, and as you can see, I've used 200 of my $300, and uh, this is about the 20th account I've made. So you make a Linux machine, the default is Debian 9, which is fine. For what we're doing here, I think any version of Linux would be fine, but I did everything with Debian 9 just to be consistent. And then you just click this button and you get an SSH shell on your machine. You can SSH in elsewhere and you can even install a remote desktop and all that jazz. But all we need here is just a command line in Linux. So once you've got this, you can get points on the scoreboard just for setting that thing up. Uh, this, but this, by the way, is set up like a CTF just to keep people interested. This is not a serious CTF with a prize. The, the challenges are not that secret. Various students have been solving them for years, you know, so there's not a lot of glory in a CTF. It's just a way to trick people into doing their homework. But, you know, it does seem to make it more fun. And as you see, some people are moving ahead here. So when you go to a challenge, it will have some instructions telling you how to do it. So here you set up a Google Cloud Linux server. And when you're done, it'll tell you a flag. And when you find a flag, you look at this number and you go inject, add, put that flag in the scoring engine. Watch the number of the challenge you're solving. 
and the stuff highlighted in green is the flag to enter in the scoreboard. So the essential Linux uh, project just has you practice basic Linux commands like ls and getting help and using nano to edit files and so on. So if you know bash, this will be easy and may not even bother doing it. If you don't know any bash at all, you'll learn a few essential commands here, which are important so you can do Linux exploits. And the uh, first Linux exploits are here. So here you've got an exploit, which is extremely famous and common. Uh, this is what you find in a lot of home routers. Your router has a management page and it has a page where you can set up the IP addresses and a place where you can test the, um, the networking. So here, if you put in 127.0.0.1, it will ping 127.0.0.1. And so you see the default bash response to ping coming here. So the reason why this is no good is because the PHP script that does this just takes this address and adds it after the word ping minus C2 and makes a command line and then executes the command line. This is a sloppy way to write code. It's easy, but the problem is you mix two different languages together. So I wrote a PHP script, but the PHP script just creates a line of bash and executes it. So that means you can just add a second command on the line with a semicolon like this semicolon ls, and now it will do the ping, and then it will do ls. So you have direct command control of the machine. Now you don't have administrator privileges. If you do who am I, to see who you are, you will find out that you are www.data, because it's just a web form served up by an Apache web server, and the Apache web server gives you that identity, not the administrator. So you can't do administrative things without using a second exploit to escalate your privileges. But you can do things, and so there's various challenges here to uh, find some flags that are hidden on the server in various places. Now, the next one is another. This is a common vulnerability. It happened to a lot of real devices. Here's image magic. This was a big one a few years back. If you make, um, I can send up a file. Let me find a um, image like this one will do. If I save this image on, say, my downloads, that would be fine. All right, and now I'm going to go to my image magic. Now, all I did was copy some standard um, PHP source code to make an image manipulator. So now I can go to my downloads and find that thing. There it was, DirkCon. Okay, DirkCon, now I open it. So you can upload an image, and when you do, it uses the image magic library to convert it to a thumbnail. So here it's made a thumbnail version of the image. And when you click on it, you see the full size image. That's all this does is just very standard material. But what I did was I printed out the command line it used. This is an image magic command line command convert thumbnail here to go to there. And the point is image magic had a command injection vulnerability that affected many Linux servers several years back. And here's the vulnerability. If you make a text file containing this content, let me bring up a text editor. All right. And I'll put it here. I just put in that stuff. And then I save it with a name that makes it look like an image. It doesn't have to really be an image. It just has to have a file name. So I'll put that in my downloads and call it exploit.ping. All right, and what's going on here is Image Magic was not content to just let you process images and change their size and other basic image things. They decided for some reason to support, uh, let me turn off my phone, to support other features. And so what they did was they support a feature that lets you fill the background with a color. And for some reason, they decided not even to make it a fixed color, but to let you connect to a website to find the color so you could dynamically change the color of an image. So this fills from a URL, and here's the URL. And the way they implemented it was by just taking the URL you provide and creating a command line in bash with curl followed by that URL. So it's very much like the ping form. And so if you use the appropriate punctuation marks around here, you can now add a Linux command like echo hello and date. So if I upload this image, which is exploit.ping right there, and send it up to the server. Then 
it does this and you see it echoes hello and then it prints the date. So once again, I can inject bash commands and they run on the server. I can find my privileges. And again, you can hunt through that server and find some uh, flags on it. All right, and there's another one down here, which was another one that affected a lot of people. This was one of the Drupal Geddens. There were three successive Drupal Geddens that gave you control of Drupal servers. So there's a Drupal server here. And um, if you run this report, it has the same property somewhere in a part of the Drupal server that registered someone for email, you could put, so again, the right series of punctuation marks, and now you can execute a command here. Now, certain characters are forbidden, like the greater than character here, so it's a little bit more difficult. That's why they had to use pipe to T instead of greater than, but when it executes this, it will write to a file on the server, which you can then see. And so once again, you can find some flags on the server. So that, uh, should get you started. And let me pause my recording. I'll leave the share going. I'm going to stop the recording so I can post this up later for people who want to see this later.